support and drive sales and revenue, right? I mean, operational expenses, okay, I get that. IBM's got a big footprint there. But in terms of driving revenue, it's keeping customers happy and keeping them customers and driving more sales. Uh, you, social selling is a hot topic. And as a writer and a speaker, I can tell you, if I want to get someone's attention, I'll mention that term, and I'm going to get someone's attention <laughs> and probably someone to say, come and speak to us. My own personal belief is social selling is one portion of a well thought out, full selling program. It's, it's a part of engagement. It is not the answer, it's not the end all. It's a part of the set of tools you should be using in order to be successful. I did an interview last week with the CEO and co-founder of a company called Mintigo. They do social uh, analytics and they're all ex-big data guys doing, they were working in security intelligence for, uh, in, his, in Israel. And I said, how did you start this company? Just say, I can't get, how do you, you go from surveillance to B2B social sales. He goes, well, you know what? We were sitting in a cafe one time, said so we're so good at finding the bad guys, why don't we spend time finding the good guys? Good guys being prospects. So, so that's interesting, right? So you're seeing that mindset of the big data folks coming into this world of filling the funnel because you can slice and dice and do that kind of micro segmentation and targeting. But the question that always comes up is, and this is Dave's hot button, Dave Vellante and I always say, when are people ready to buy? That's signaling as well. People could say, hey, you know, my product, failing or I need new real estate or, I mean, so is that kind of what you see as a future scenario? It is, I think, I think those though are the easy signals. I think I always try to help my clients understand that it's, it's not saying my internet's down, I need a new provider. That's simple, right? You can jump on that. I think it's the indication of watching the flow of that over a period of time. If there's dissatisfaction, if there's doubt, if there's levels of communication or expression or activity, and that's part of what I'm excited about at the conference, is I'm learning that there's questions that I don't even know to ask yet. And I think once we get access to these tools fully, as a sales guy, I can ask questions. That's how I've been trained, is to ask questions. But to think that there are questions I don't even know to ask yet, that's pretty exciting for me. You know, I got to ask you this question because I um, had a technical career, and then towards when I, when later in my career I had a sales career, actually in a sales force, and they always rolled out sales automation tools, the, the new sales tool. There's always that holy grail tool that are, that's being rolled out. So how does big data and things like Watson change all that? Because I can imagine this new dashboard being almost like radar for the sales rep. Yep. So what's your take on that? Well, I think the, the key there is, and you hit it, is that it's at the sales rep level. The lower you can bring the engagement, you think about Salesforce automation, you think about CRM, et cetera, where is it designed and who does the implementation? Up here, because they need reporting, they want to know the funnel, they want to know the pipeline, they want reports. No one ever asked the salespeople, what do you guys need? What, what information is critical to help you sell more? That's the end result, but yet it's always started up here and they try to force information up. So, so they the th project some syntax down to the sales guy and it's like, oh, I didn't ask for that. So when, when is the largest day for, in a, in a calendar week, when is the largest day for sales input into any CRM tool? Sunday night. It's because it's, it's of the Monday morning sales a meeting. Monday morning sales meeting, they know they better get it in there because they'll either be asked about it by their manager or they'll be questioned. And yeah. I know some very large tech companies in these Monday morning quote commit meetings, it better be there, you better defend it, or you're in trouble, right? <laughs> we know all about that. We well, have you're those both same laughing, meetings. Right? No, we've been there. And and it's, it. it's foolish, and you think, okay, so the, the promise to me of, of something like Watson Analytics, if it truly is down at that salesperson level, I know what I need as an individual salesperson. Let me go ask, let me inquire, let me query what's going on, and if I have access at that level, the results will bubble up. The results should be visible automatically to my management team. They don't need to ask me the question because my activity will dictate what the results when are. When you hit here. on it, the problem earlier is marketing says, okay, here's a bunch of leads. And the sales guy goes, these aren't leads. This is, these aren't qualified, they're not what I'm looking for in leads. I mean, that every company that we talk to has that problem. And marketing spends tons of dough on finding these so-called leads that are Donald Duck and, you know, Mother Goose. Look, I, I mean, in this day and age, webinar marketing and e-books and all those kind of things are prevalent. Uh, in my own practice, I can tell you that probably 60% of the email addresses I get to get access to whatever it is, aren't even real, they're not even real. I go back to trying to validate. They're not even validate. potential leads. Exactly. They're, just, yeah, they're yeah. nonsense. And, and so yeah, what they want is that information, they don't want to share that information yet. And the critical piece, I believe, is, is how do I get them to engage, and, and I, 
I'm at the point of saying give it to them without all that opt-in process, right? But let me capture something so that the next time they come in, even if it's for free, I'll know they're there and I'll know they were there a week ago. That's one of those triggers and indicators to me that said, there's something more here. Otherwise, I don't want to be bothered by that traffic. So, you're right, because the companies, every company does this. They put up this huge hurdle, and you just, you just want to read the, the bloody piece of content, <laughs> okay? You don't want to go through some rectal exam to try to, to get there, and you want a better experience. And, and you're happy if, they, if there's a cookie or something, they're collecting a little bit of information, and you can always control that. Um, but there's this rigid sense of, I got to collect all this data in order for you to get that piece of content and it destroys the user experience. Plus, you are automatically in a bucket as a lead. I'm not yeah. a lead, I can't tell you how many times. I don't even know if I want the information for sure, but I need to fill out the form just to get access, and I might skim two paragraphs. Yeah, that wasn't what I was looking for. And the next day you get an email or a call? Or both. You got, a, you got some fans on Crowdchat, you got Jim Cantor just says, you've earned a, Miles Austin, at Miles Austin, you've earned a follower, sir. Forced, <laughs> quote, <laughs> quote, forced engagement is truly an emerging problem. Engagement has to be a natural attraction for best results. Great point by Jim Canto, um, you know, fellow community member of our, of, our, of our group. Forced engagement, big problem. That's spam, basically, or you know, too much shilling, or you know, vendor puke, as Dave always calls it. <laughs> People on social are connected to their friends. They, it's, there's a concept that we've been calling social proof, where you know, if, if IBM or a big company comes into a party or a poker game and just starts selling their stuff, be like, whoa, get out, you're <laughs> get out. Or if they say, hey, I'm buying the beer, that's a different story. So you know, it's a it's an ingratiation kind of engagement. So there's an art to the engagement. Um, can you comment on what you found on? that side of it in terms of looking for those kinds of engagement signals? I find a lot of times that from a web experience specifically, it is frequency. If I see someone that has signed up for the third webinar, let's say in a row, I'll know that. If I find that they're coming back and they keep downloading, maybe I'll find their name in an RSS subscription or an email subscription, whatever it might be, those are the easy ones. But if I have the newer technologies as they continue to come, that start to give me an ability just to notice that there's a pattern of interest. To me, that's the early stage, and as a sales guy, I'd much rather be there at the very early stage of their interest, rather than at the stage when they say, okay, I have to buy today. I think you're right. I think smart marketers are saying, look, we have to engage in the conversation and be a source of value in that conversation, because by the time they're ready to buy, they've already done their research, they've already vetted people, they've already interacted with people. Okay, yeah, now I'm ready to buy, and I'm going to narrow it down to these three or maybe this one. Well, and, and again, it goes back to your, your conversation about social proof. It, we, we learned even this morning, it still goes back down to the individual people that I trust and respect within my circle of friends. And whether it's a professional circle or it's personal, whatever my decision process is, I'm going to ask or, or mention it to someone else. And if I trust them and they have a positive experience, I'm in. So again, I think all this work we do to position and posture um, many times is really just a waste of time. I think we need to earn the right through our performance and our content and what we have of value to offer. And if it's there and it's real, you're in. You're, the odds of you winning that opportunity go way up. Can we talk more about social data and the value of social data? We had Nate Silver on, John, two years ago at yeah. Tableau. Yeah. And I asked Nate about being able to predict from social data, specific, generally specifically Twitter, and he said the data's not there yet. You know, it'll get there eventually, but it's not there yet. And the tooling and, he commented, and, both these. But your comment was, mm, Nate's you know, a, a polling guy, and he's looking at structured sort of polls. Miles, in your experience, is the, is the data there? Is it getting there? I, uh, boy, I, I, I wish, I don't have that background in data, but I would tell you from a marketing and a sales guy, I get all the data I need from that stream. It's, it's there for me, yeah. absolutely. If I'm not just looking at the surface level, mm -hmm. as I said, if I just look for how many followers and all those kind of superficial things, it doesn't matter. Wasted but I look right. for frequency, and, and there's times when whether it's a comment or <laughs> someone starts to add value to the conversation or challenge the conversation, yeah, right. I get excited because when someone says, Miles, I disagree with you. An engagement, a social gesture, an engagement, a maybe yeah. a harder engagement. We use the fishing analogy all the time. Yeah. If the fish are jumping, that means you can actually see the fish. So you got to know what you're looking for too. A part of it is also knowing what you're looking for. So for you, you have an algorithm that says, hey, if they've come to the webinar multiple times, I can take that as a positive gesture of interest. 
I don't know if it's an algorithm, but all I know is it's it works. It's an algorithm in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what people do. They have their own little nuances. But that's the beautiful thing about big data. You can't project formulas to everyone. It's all about knowing what to look for. And this comes back down to a trend that I see, Dave, coming, which is performance-based social media marketing, which is the performance is in the eye of the beholder. In other words, I might target X, you might target Y, but it doesn't matter. I got my objective, <laughs> I got X and you got Y, so if we, get our, if we get our results, who cares? If I want tuna, give me the tuna. If I want you know, different kind of fish. So that's where I see it going. I mean, I, it's hard to figure that out, but I don't think the tooling's there, Dave. I think Nate Silver points it out that he's not a geek, he's a polar, but what, what he points out in that interview was that there is no real tooling for him. He can only work with what he has, a hammer and a nail. He needs more tools. Yeah. And, and the, Look, the tools market, I, I live in that space every day of my week, and um, I have a backlog of tools I haven't even gotten to yet. So the, that, that world, and with all the new things that are coming out, that I think tool development and, and applications are going to just explode at an even faster rate. But you know, I always look back to like maybe a networking event, and, and there's one individual that I'm interested in, and so is a competitor. We both interact and do whatever we do in our day to day, and at the end of that event, you can go ask both marketers or salespeople. One has a fantastic opportunity, the other one says, nothing here for me tonight, right? It's a matter of understanding what you're trying to do and understand your goals and what your objectives are. And if you went there with an expectation, I'm going to sell something, you're probably going to be disappointed. So you're, you're I, wanted to ask, I wanted to ask Carla this question because she's also a practitioner on the data science side. And, and I want to ask you this, this question, and so you know, I'll, I'll ask others is, we're finding an answer, I'll, but I won't tell you what we're finding, I just want to see what you say. Um, I'm a, I'm a guy who needs, needs tooling, okay? And I have, I'm, I'm swimming in you know, objectives, I got a, all this other tools, and you're a sales guy coming in from a tool company. Hi, I have a platform, use my tool. Oh, what do you react to that? I mean, are people, I mean, are you finding that people are like, oh, give me another tool to evaluate, like a hole in the head? I mean, it's really like oversaturated with these quote, 